Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and this is Space Golf. Cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm sharing Space Golf. This was basically my attempt at creating an arcade style game that combines skee ball and mini golf. And I think it turned out really great. It was super fun to make as well. So I'm really excited to share that creation process with you guys in this video. Right now, this is set up pretty much like a skee ball type game. But what I really love about this is that it actually uses a pegboard type system where all the parts can be moved around and placed anywhere on the board. And we can also come up with different types of elements to put on this board. So it really has a lot of replay value. And, you know, I'm just getting started with it, but it's already at a very solid place. It's already very fun to play. So that's why I'm making this video today. Let's hop right into it. Starting out, I just had this strip of AstroTurf and also this old sign, which is just some plastic sheet. So I clean that up and then I just used these clamps to create a really quick prototype ramp. It actually worked really great right off the bat, and I was able to make quick adjustments just by changing the angle of these clamps stuck in the ground. That was all it took for me to get inspired, so I started sketching out different ideas of what I could do with this ramp, and I pretty immediately started coming up with this ski ball type game. You can also see some other cool obstacles that I sketched out, and with those ideas, I decided to make a more permanent ramp. So I just had these scrap pieces of plywood, and I took my plastic and used it as a template to trace out the arc of the ramp. And then I went ahead and went over that again to make a more smooth line. With my ramp angle traced out, I stacked two of those pieces of plywood together and I clamped them. That way I could cut them out together and get two identical sides for my ramp. After cutting those pieces out on the bandsaw, I clamped them together again and did a few extra cuts. So here we have the top edge of the ramp. I'm gonna give it a bit of a lip and I'll also cut off a tiny bit on the bottom. That way it's not so vulnerable to breaking. I also did a few touch-ups on the curve itself to really make it as smooth as I could. Now I wanna sand the curves and I have this sanding block and I'm gonna throw a little life hack at ya. You can actually just use the opposite side of the block and that'll give me a curved surface to sand with. So that's gonna work better for this slope. Next, I'm gonna make the struts that span across the ramp. So to do that, I just used the plastic sheet itself to get the right length for this wood beam. And then I'm gonna cut out a few of those as well as this larger piece for the backing. I'll put the wooden beam against the side of my ramp and trace it out so that I can cut away a perfectly sized slot to put these into place. Once again, I'll cut these slots out with the two sides of the ramp stacked together so that they're symmetrical. Now I can assemble my ramp and I'll connect these parts first with a bit of wood glue and then I'll finalize the connection with my nail gun. I'll use plenty of nails for all the connections just to make sure this is really nice and sturdy. Then I'm gonna attach the plastic sheet to the top of the ramp. And to do that, I decided to drill some pilot holes and then just use screws to hold it down. I probably could have used the nail gun for this as well, but I think the screws will make everything a little bit more secure. I'll stick a screw right in the middle just for good measure, to make sure everything's flush. And then I can go ahead and test out my new ramp. That worked really well, so now I'm gonna go ahead and place this pegboard on the back and see how that works. 
I actually didn't even have to cut this pegboard down. I just happened to have the perfect size left over from my previous pegboard projects. I was really happy with the path that the ball took through the air and it seemed like it would really work for what I'm trying to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next step and that's creating some side rails to make sure that the ball doesn't fall off the side of the ramp so often. Once again, I just happened to have the perfect pieces of wood here, which are these fence posts connected to a two by two. I'll cut those to size on the chop saw, as well as a smaller piece to go on the back. I'll make a few marks here and cut away a chunk on the back here so that I can slot the parts together. Now, I wouldn't have to do this if I was making this from scratch. It might actually be easier to do things in a different order, but since I already had these pieces that were connected together, I just worked with what I had. Once again, I'll glue those into place and use my staple gun to quickly connect everything. And then on the other side, I'm also gonna put a piece to make sure that this frame is nice and rigid. I decided to add one more piece of wood along the top edge of the ramp just to make the plastic a little less floppy and give everything more structure. I used my staple gun all along the top edge so that it would be nice and flat so we could get a good consistent takeoff. Next, I wanna fashion a connection between the board and the ramp. So once I figured out the ideal placement for both of them, I used this angle guide to figure out the angle at which they connect. Next, I got two of these steel sheets and I'm gonna use one on either end of the board. And the plan is to bend these to create a kind of lip that I could put on the edge of the board to connect it to the ramp. So I'll clamp these in this vise and then I'm just gonna hammer it slowly and try to get a nice consistent bend. I can use that angle guide as a reference to make sure that this bend matches the angle that I'm going for. Now I'll do the same thing with the second piece and try to match the angle as precisely as I can. I think I did a pretty good job. Now I can clamp these pieces into place and I'll drive several screws into each one of them so it's a nice, strong connection. I also filed these pointy edges here. That way they wouldn't be such a safety hazard. Next up, I bought some more two by twos that I'm gonna use for the legs that hold up the back of this board. So I'll measure those and cut them to length. And I'm also gonna drill a hole in the back and make it a kind of hinging mechanism so that these fold down into the board. This piece I'm drilling here is actually just a template that I'm gonna use as a guide to help me drill nice centered holes through the legs. Here you can see it clamped into place and you can see how I'm using that piece as the guide to help me drill this nice straight hole. I'll do that on the other side as well. And then I'm gonna use this circle guide to mark off the ends of the pieces and round them so that they'll swivel nice and easily against the board. I'll give those ends a quick sanding, and then I can go ahead and start connecting them to the board. So I've got these massive bolts that are gonna go through the legs and the board. I'll put a bolt on the other end to hold everything into place, and now you can see how the leg swivels up and down really nicely. I'll also attach a crossbeam near the bottom of the legs here to keep everything square, and also to make the legs move up and down together. The swivel action works really great. Now the only thing I need is some kind of stopper behind the legs here to make sure they don't bend back too far. As it turns out, these little blocks that I cut out earlier fit in place perfectly, so I'll just stick those back there and glue them into place. I also printed out these little rubber strips using Matterhacker's flexible TPU filament and those will just act as little stoppers between the wood pieces. 
I bought another roll of this artificial turf. This stuff is really great and it's only about 20 bucks at Home Depot. And I used the pegboard itself as a cutting guide to cut this turf into strips of the appropriate width. I thought it would be cool to have the artificial grass extend onto the board itself, so I decided to try sticking it on there with some spray adhesive. I started off with this industrial strength silicone based spray adhesive, but I ran out while I was spraying that on, so I switched to this 3M Super 77 adhesive, which isn't quite as strong, but I was hoping it would do the job. And I did a second coat on the back of the pegboard as well. Then I laid it down and I used one of the cans to roll it flat and smooth. As that was drying, I decided to staple the turf onto the ramp itself. So I just used that staple gun and I went all along the edge until everything was nice and taut. Back to my pegboard, everything was dry now and the adhesive seemed to be working well. So I cut off the excess turf and then it was time to start drilling these holes through the back so that I can use the pegboard. So I got my quarter inch drill bit and one by one I went ahead and re-drilled through every single hole on this pegboard. And as you can imagine it was very time consuming and very tiring. Once I'd gone through all the holes, I brushed things off, and as you can see, we have a pegboard again. Let's go ahead and set this up, and then we'll start printing out the obstacles for the board. Here I am printing out some of the smaller cups using Matterhacker's Gold Pro PLA on the CR10, and then over on the Lulzbot Task 6, I was printing out one of the larger cups using BCN PETG filament. As you can see, these ones came out pretty stringy, and that's mainly because I printed using a one millimeter nozzle instead of the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But that's easy enough to clean up with a wire brush or an X-Acto knife. So once I'd done that, I went ahead and stuck these onto my playing field for a quick test run. The first thing I noticed was how awesome the ball return was as long as you landed on the playing field somewhere, the ball tended to roll right back to the beginning. The other thing I noticed was how difficult this is, but boy is it satisfying when you get a hole in one. Yes. With everything working out really well, I decided to start printing some of the larger obstacles. And to help me out with that, I'm going to use some of this 3D gloop bed adhesive to get things to stick down to this 400 by 400 millimeter version of the CR10. So I brushed down a thin layer of this gloop around the footprint of my print, and then I went ahead and started the largest print for this project, which is this giant ring that's gonna go around the main target. The print stuck down perfectly, so I'm very happy with how that 3D gloop worked out. Here's another piece, and this is the bullseye, which I printed out using Zortrax Z Ultra material on the M200 printer. I started adding those to the board, but while I was doing that, one of the pegs broke off on this PETG piece. So I decided to try the 3D Gloop PLA glue and see if it worked on the PETG. It actually worked very well, and I ended up using this stuff on basically all of the pegs for this game, just since they're a pretty fragile part. As the rest of my parts were printing out, I noticed that the adhesive between the pegboard and the turf wasn't really sticking down as well as I'd hoped. So I ended up whipping out the staple gun again and going all around the board to make sure that everything would stay down. I also added a little extra strip of turf here at the bottom to cover up those metal pieces. Also to make this connection between the ramp and the board a little more secure, I decided to put some nails that go through the holes on those metal pieces. And the idea is that those will hook into place so that this will be a much more secure connection. I did that on both sides and it worked out really well, just as I was hoping. Now we're just down to the final details. So here you can see I sprayed this dot to indicate the starting point. 
Although you'll see this kind of got wiped away pretty quickly. So maybe I have to use a different type of paint. I also printed out a bunch of these little space themed decals using Melt Ink's glow in the dark blue filament. I designed these years ago to stick onto ceilings, but I realized that I can just print out some standalone pegs and use that 3D gloop to glue them together. And that gives me these perfect decorations that I can stick all over the playing field with those pegs. I also printed out these flexible end stops that go on the board here to make sure that the ball stays on the ramp more often. So here's the playing field with all the obstacles printed out and put into place. I've got all those little space decorations and I also added labels to indicate all the different point values. So this thing is pretty much set. The rules I decided to use for the game are very simple. You get six shots to try to rack up as many points as you possibly can. Even with a good amount of practice now, this is still a pretty challenging game, and I definitely had to edit this to make myself look a lot better. I did also get around to printing one other type of obstacle, which are these flaps that you have to knock over. They've got a little clip so that you can attach photos or drawings to make them more interesting, but basically you line them up on the board and go at it. It's also possible to flip the tabs back up, and I think that could lead to some interesting gameplay. All right guys, that's where I'm at so far with this space golf game. It's already very complete, very fun to play, but like I mentioned, the possibilities are pretty endless because of this whole pegboard system. I'm interested in hearing your guys' ideas of what other kinds of elements I could put on here. I was thinking of like trampolines, having things bounce around, making this some kind of crazy trick shot arena. I also think it would be really cool to put some electronic elements in there and actually be able to count score automatically. All kinds of things like that. Let me know your ideas for different elements or even just a cool name for this thing. And if you wanna make one for yourself, I'll put all the printed parts on my mini factory free for you to download. And yeah, it's good times. So that's it for now. Until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.